the 21st century has witnessed a significant increase of investments in space missions. Even some private companies have decided to invest huge amounts of money into the space arena. So, is there any ulterior motive behind such investments? And what possible implications does it have upon us? Is what we are going to find out in this video. Let's begin. During the Cold War, the world witnessed the first phase of space race in which the Soviets and the Americans were trying to overpower each other by showcasing their technological superiority and one of the battlegrounds for it also became the space. The real motive behind the Cold War was an ideological battle between the liberal democratic America and the socialist Soviet Union and both of them wanted to show which ideology could lead to the greatest leap of mankind. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The race was majorly dominated by the Soviets in the 1950s and the 60s, who put the first satellite, the first astronaut and the first probe on moon. But then the Americans shook the world by claiming to put the first man on moon, a result of the rigorous spending in Apollo missions. Whether they actually did it or was it the beauty of an Hollywood set? We may never know. It's an old federal textbook. We've replaced them with the corrected versions. Corrected? Explaining how the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. The space race had inspired a new level of imagination and writers were too optimistic about the future in space. May the force be with us all. But then, the economic depression of 1970s, the turf war in Afghanistan, and the downfall of Soviet Union eventually drew both nations out of the race. However, the investments of the first phase brought about a revolution for the electronics and IT industry. Everything that we depend upon today, from fast food delivery to high-speed navigation, can be attributed as the outcomes of the investments in space race. Now, in the 21st century, the world is witnessing the second phase of space race, in which many countries have joined the race. Even the private sector is highly involved, possibly because of the commercial potential of space mining and tourism. We want to just keep improving rocket technology until there's a, a city on Mars. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Uh, it's you know, time to go back to the moon, but this time to stay. Many countries are now allowing private companies to own resources explored from space which is what makes the space race more excitable for the private companies. Experts claim that some celestial bodies like the asteroids have trillions of dollars worth of resources, which is why this second phase might actually become a race worth watching. The first trillionaires will be those who mine asteroids. The space also has a security aspect for nations as there are many strategically important satellites which are essential to the functioning of sovereign nations, from their military communication to high-speed internet. The important infrastructure of nations is unguarded at the moment, which is why US has decided to develop a whole new military division, Space Force, which might soon be followed by many others and eventually lead to weaponization of space. To establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces, that's a big statement. On the other hand, China poses a significant threat to the world who has been launching most number of rockets into the space since 2018 and is also building its own space station. The problem with the authoritarian Chinese regime is that it is not transparent about its motives and is a more stable economic power than the Soviets ever were. Meanwhile, the four major contenders of space race have decided to take their manned missions to the next level which could mean marking of territories and boundaries in outer space. They also have tested their capabilities to attack the satellites from ground, which they claim would be essential during war scenarios. Spacecom will defend America's vital interests in space, the next warfighting domain. So, there might be an underlying issue of weaponization in space, but we can hope that the investments in the second phase of space race might boost subsequent industries overcome the shortage of Earth's resources and lead to overall development of human civilization. 
it would definitely help us to make scientific strides and solve the mysteries of space. And finally, we can hope of living in reality the world that was imagined by our writers and authors. Space. Going to be a lot of things happening in space. American superiority in space is absolutely vital. And we're leading, but we're not leading by enough, but very shortly we'll be leading by a lot. Будем там осуществлять беспилотные, а потом и пилотируемые пуски для исследования дальнего космоса и лунная программа, и затем исследование Марса. अंतरिक्ष में जाएंगे हाथ में तिरंगा झंडा लेकर के जाएंगे